Doug Durth tells the story of a local football team in his film Underdogs. Doug, the underdogs don't just, are not just on the field. The community is also dealing with manufacturing jobs, leaving, and I would like for you to share why you drew those parallels. Well, I grew up in the Akron Canton area, so lived here and um, went, to high, went to high school uh, down south. So, you know, I grew up in the football community, which is Ohio. There's no better, uh, bigger fans for football than Ohio. And also, um, a lot of people in my community um, in Canton, as well as people I knew in Akron, have suffered the manufacturing job loss in this part of the country as well. It was Hoover and Canton and a lot of the tire companies and, you know. So it was just, it was um, something that I had been affected by personally growing up. And also, my executive producer who came up with, approached me with the original idea for this story, um, kind of had this idea of, of implementing these two storylines. So we just worked really hard in crafting something that talked about underdogs um, and letting football kind of be, represent that, represent the community, but also really focusing on points in our lives when we're all underdogs and we're just, you know, we just keep trying to do the right thing and, and hoping it's going to pay off. You also shot your film uh, here in Ohio. Why was that important to you? Well, I mean, I'm from here, so it was always, ever since I started making movies, I kind of dreamed of the day I could come back here and, and make a film in Ohio. I, I joke because uh, I say my, my parents finally got to see I really work for a living. Uh, they think I just hang out on the beach in California. <laughs> but also it was really exciting to work with um, the local crews, and also, we found some really great talent. We found some, two of our, our lead kid actors, you, you, I call them kids because they play high school football players, are right here from Cleveland. And uh, they did a wonderful job, fantastic job. So uh, just really proud. I'm proud of my state and, and proud of the folks here, and I was just really happy to share it with them. It's a pretty unique story that you're sharing. Uh, when you began or working with the project, did you guys, the executive producer brought it to you, did you have a script that you started with? No, we didn't have a script at all. Um, I had done some kind of uh, corporate work with his company. He's an entrepreneur and a marketing person down in the Canton area. And so he came to me with I this idea that he had. Um, part of the story is very true about the entrepreneur inventing a product and then uh, somebody trying to take it from him. So we thought that was really, really interesting. And he's another person who was very adamant about shooting it in Ohio. He's, he's been somebody who works really hard about keeping his own manufacturing jobs here, even if it costs a little more. So it was just, it was really a natural fit for us both to do that. Um, and so Ben had called me, his name's Ben Suarez, he called me and said, hey, I have this great idea. Um, you know, so we brought a, a writer on. This one was a bit of a miracle. I mean, we, from the minute we put pen to paper to write the script to the minute we delivered a finished film was just over a year. Wow, that's yeah. a short amount of time um, ultimately for films. Yeah. Why do you think, uh, it was the generation and the passion that drove you guys, but were there other things that you think kind of sunk to make it happen that quickly? Yeah, I think, well, most filmmakers will understand. The nice thing was we had the financing. Mm -hmm. um, that makes it a lot easier because you can start working. And the second thing is we wanted to use real high school locations. And so we had a ticking clock to get that done before the school year started. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just put everybody, as a director, you love that <laughs> because, you know, you don't have any excuses. You have to start by this date and right. everybody starts focusing on it. So I think that was the big part of it is we, we had the financing and we had a bit of a ticking clock of when we wanted to shoot it where we could use the locations uh, on independent films. Right. Of course, you, you beg and plead for everything. So we were just really trying to hit this window. Excellent. Yeah. We, uh, I, you really kind of learned, talk about hitting the ground and running. You learn filmmaking by doing. Can you talk a little bit about that process for you? Yeah, I moved out to California about 20 years ago, <laughs> back when I was two. Just kidding. But, Just um, yesterday. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but I hadn't planned on a, f a career in filmmaking at all. In fact, I was a personal trainer, and I, I went out there and I started working with some entertainers, actors, musicians. Um, and I created a friendship working on the set with John Cusack, who's a very famous actor. And a couple years into our relationship on that level, he started a production company and said, why don't you come work for me there? So I started working as his assistant, mm -hmm. um, learning the business that way because I hadn't studied it in school. And over the years, got very interested after reading a lot of scripts, um, went to acting school, started acting, and then eventually evolved into producing. So it was kind of... Uh, uh, a bit of 15 years of on-the-job training, you know. 
Yeah, yeah. and I, I think that filmmaking is that process. Yes. You, know, you, you have to learn it by doing it, putting your hands on it. Yeah. What um, is one of the more ex unexpected lessons that you think you learned by just kind of being out there and making movies? Um, I think probably the most, well, a refreshing lesson is this. Everybody is looking for good material. And I, I, I tell filmmakers that because it seems like such a frustrating business to break into. People are like, well, you got to have contacts, you have to have all this. But the truth is people are looking for the next great film and the next great TV series or web series. Um, and so I think that should be inspiring to filmmakers because um, there's room. You know, there's, it's, it's not, it's very competitive, but you know, if you have good material and you have something really interesting to present, people are really looking we'll for respond that. respond to it. So there is, there's this, there, there is this need. Now, you have to know your stuff. People say, well, you got so lucky. And it's like, well, even if you get an opportunity, you have to be good at what you do to be able to, yeah. to take advantage of it. So yeah. I always encourage people to go to film school and really learn your craft. There is room for very talented and um, efficient and great artists. Excellent. But you got to get that first, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and even as you talk about the material and the strength of the material, some would say that underdogs goes against the grain. You know, today a lot of films that have um, characters that are this age, you know, we're looking at vampire films, we're looking at, you know, um, post-apocalyptic stories, you know, dystopia. Yours is so story-driven. Um, were you conscious of that from day one with it? Yeah, and I, I thought it would be refreshing. I grew up watching, in the late 80s, watching kind of these, in fact, D.B. Sweeney, who's a star in our film, is probably best known for a film he did called Cutting Edge, which right. was just this fun oh, yes. hockey. And everyone loves <laughs> I it. I know, you know it well. <laughs> we don't see a lot of those films anymore, so um, that's sort of the tone and the style we wanted to do this in. We wanted to kind of pay homage to the really good, sort of inspiring family films, but then give the film a style that's current today, the look of the film, the music. We have the Black Keys, we have yes. Blues Travelers, we have all this great music in the film. So we try to make it contemporary, but kind of pay homage to just some really good right. sports movies, you know. Yeah, speaking of uh, paying homage and, and thinking about your past and um, your filmmaking past, what would you say was your favorite film when you were 12 years old? Can, can you remember at all? When I was 12 yeah. years old. <laughs> um, well, I'd like to come up with a really smart film to make me look smart, but the truth is I, I, I remember my dad taking me to see Escape from Witch Mountain. Excellent, and, yes. Um, I, I like know those that movies. movie. Oh, yeah, it's a fantastic film. it was really fun, film. you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think when I was that young, those are the kind of movies I really liked. Wonderful. That's why I asked for 12, because I don't want it yes. to be a smart. I want it to be, yeah. this is your gut reaction. This is your experience that you yeah. had, a film that you love. Uh, on that same note, I'm going to ask you, kind of fast forwarding today, um, what's in your Netflix queue right now? Um, well, I'm a, I'm a bit of a documentary buff. In fact, most of the stuff I've done before the feature films have been documentaries. And um, I've got, I'm getting ready to actually teach a little class for four weeks on documentaries in LA. So I've got Wonderful. Thin Blue Line, which is a really great yes. documentary. And then I also have an interesting one called Jesus Camp. So both of yes. those I've ordered because I'm watching them to prepare for the class. Wonderful. Um, and then T-Vote on my TV so I can watch it about 12 times is kick-ass because I love that. Oh, movie. yes. <laughs> Well, it's I, I really love this process of um, learning and now moving into a teaching role. A lot of people say you don't know something until you can teach it. As you're getting ready for this new experience, what's something that's the most exciting thing about now teaching film? Well, when they approached and asked me to do it, I, I hadn't really considered it yet. Although, um, now that I'm in my 40s, I kind of feel like part of my job is to also mentor the new up-and-coming. I'm a director and a filmmaker. I'm always looking for young talent, you know, so I think that uh, getting out and, and meeting folks and helping, I had a lot of help in this business, I had a lot of mentors, so I kind of felt like it's just a good thing for me to do, but I also think in studying, in, in preparing, I didn't know I'd had to do lesson plans, and, but in preparing for that, it's, it's sharpened my own skills again, because I go back in and, and look at some of the techniques and structure, which is all very important, and it's good to be reminded of that. So. It's kind of a, for me, it's a win-win. It's going to be really fun, and, and I'm looking forward to it. 
Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Um, how do you feel um, uh, your students, you know, uh, if they see underdogs or they ask you to see it, are you open to kind of sharing that work with them or do you kind of feel like you want them to do their own thing without seeing your work? Yeah, I, I purposely haven't picked one of my own documentaries right. to share in the class um, because I would just like to talk about some other ones. But yeah, I'm, I'm totally open to sharing the work. And again, with filmmakers, because there's so many challenges along the way. Right. And I think it's important for people to go in and, and just realize, if you go into it knowing that, the whole thing with the film is just trying to, to get through today and get the camera rolling the next day, you know? And there's gonna be a million things that you have to change. The script changes nightly. But if you can go into it just knowing all that, you just make that part of the adventure, you know? And the, would that be kind of the advice that you would give to students is just every day it's gonna change, don't give up. Don't give up and, and do your best when you can to work on something you're really passionate about because then you don't mind. You know, if, if you're doing uh, something that you're passionate about or when you're first starting, you know, it's always great to pick a subject matter that you're either very passionate about or very familiar with. Um, and then it, it kind of drives you to get through. There's, there's more tough days than there are great days, but, you know, the overall right. journey right. is exciting. Thank you, Doug. Thank you for bringing your film here to Cleveland. Thank you for bringing it not just to the festival, but bringing the production here yeah. and telling our stories, the stories that are here um, that end up being universal. We really appreciate it. Thank you for joining us, um, and we will see you on the next Cleveland Film Talk.